City Hall is the architectural crown jewel of Philadelphia. It was at one time both the nation's most expensive and tallest building. The City Hall Tower, depicted here in a night mist, was completed in 1894. Built of brick, white marble, and limestone, Philadelphia City Hall is the world's largest freestanding masonry building. It took from 1871 to 1901 to complete the major footprint of the building at a cost of $24 million. Although the interiors weren't completed until 1901, the east entrance to City Hall Quad was, because technically it's outside. Street musicians love the acoustics of these semi-interior passageways. The accordion player here looks like he's always been there. Now let's move on to the south view of City Hall's central courtyard. Built in the Beaux-Arts style, the architectural motifs seem to have been borrowed from any number of previous antique styles. Let's move on to Portico Row, shown here in a night rain. Portico Row is a series of attached row homes on Spruce Street between 9th and 10th in the Washington Square West section of Philadelphia. These brick townhouses were designed in the 1830s by Philadelphia architect Thomas Walter, who later became one of the contributing architects of the Capitol Building in Washington, D.C. Also designed by Thomas Walter, the Philadelphia Contribution Ship is the oldest property insurance company in the United States, founded by Benjamin Franklin in 1752, although the current Greek revival structure only dates back to 1836. Picked up and moved a half block away and clear over to the other side of the street, this curiously southern style 1830s Greco Federal townhouse was designed by Robert Mills, a South Carolinian best known as the architect of the Washington Monument. I pass these two little conjoined houses when I take a shortcut through the National Rose Garden here in Philadelphia. This is the back of those houses. The front facades face the 500 block of Locust Street. This is another one of my shortcuts, mostly for when walking my dog. These enclosed carriage gates now house automobiles. This painting is more about the sharp afternoon light than the architecture itself. The University of the Arts dormitory buildings, caught here in an early morning fog, were designed by Philadelphia's premier late 19th century architect, Frank Furness. The Kimmel Center is off in the distance. Even local pedestrians don't always know about some of the charming carriage lanes in Philadelphia. The one on the viewer's far left is another design by Frank Furness, showing the changes in aging from over the years. The Academy of Fine Arts is Frank Furness's masterpiece. It was completed in time for the centennial of 1876, held here in Philadelphia. The Academy itself, however, was founded in 1805 by Charles Wilson Peale making it the first and oldest art museum and art school in America. Moving from one academy to another, the Pennsylvania Academy of Music, designed by Napoleon Lebrun, opened its doors to the public on January 26, 1857, as America's very first opera house. Moving from one theater to another, the Walnut Street Theater, built in 1807, holds the record for being the oldest continually operating legitimate theater in America. It originally opened under the name The Circus Theater and went through a variety of titles over the last two centuries. The stage and orchestra pit is attributed to William Strickland. Another design by William Strickland is the Old Customs House, opened in 1824 with its white marble tower in the foreground. Directly to the north, Contrasting the two towers is the 1934 Art Deco Customs House, built at a cost of $3.5 million through the WPA to employ workers during the Great Depression. 
Stepping back to pre-revolutionary Philadelphia, the Man Full of Trouble Tavern dates back to 1759, catering to the sailors who were docked nearby and looking for lodging, as well as a meal topped off with a frosty brew. Sailors were often squeezed in four to a bed, sharing space with the tavern's own staff. Prior to becoming the First Lady, Dolly Madison lived in this house in Society Hill with her first husband, John Todd Jr., who died in 1783. It's now a part of the National Park Service. Carpenter's Hall, completed in 1775 and designed by Robert Smith in the Georgian style, was built as a tradesman's hall, but it also served as the home of the First Continental Congress and the official birthplace of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. It was briefly occupied by the British during the Revolutionary War. Philadelphia is known for its distinctive neighborhoods that all have their own flavor, if you will. This is the Chinatown Gate, which was dedicated in 1984. I actually had the pleasure of watching the installation of this beautiful structure. It was quite a fascinating process. The gate is pictured here well after midnight, when the streets have mostly quieted down. South Philly is synonymous with the cheesesteak. This living memory of the doo-wop era was founded in 1966 by Joey Vento. Gino's is located at the fork of the road of 9th Street and Passyunk Avenue, right around the corner from a mural of all of the 1950s and 1960s heartthrobs like Frankie Avalon, Bobby Rydell, and Fabian. It's a timepiece. Literally spitting distance away from Gino's is the Italian market, painted here on a vacant Easter Sunday afternoon, normally crowded with shoppers. The market is a lively, awning covered stretch of 9th Street between Passyunk and Washington Avenues, filled with butcher shops, cafes, restaurants, bakeries, and cheese stores. I'm not aware of any particular historic significance to this mansard-style Victorian double house. I just painted it because it appealed to me at night, illuminated by the streetlights on the other side of 10th Street. This section of Washington Square West was rechristened the Gaberhood, as so much of this area was gentrified by the LGBTQ community, as noted by the rainbow colors on the street signs. It's also where a great many of the bars, clubs, and restaurants can be found. To Be Groomed is a charming little barber shop with only two chairs. It has been lovingly restored by the current business owner. When I first moved to Philadelphia, this tiny freestanding building was a locksmith shop. This and several other paintings were done during the first three months of the COVID-19 pandemic, reflected in the silence of the building and the one sole passerby. Moriarty's Irish Pub is a particularly poignant reminder of the impacts of COVID-19's social distancing. This piece was started on the night of St. Patrick's Day, when this good-natured establishment would normally have been alive with patrons reveling out onto the streets. The cheerful uplighting stands in stark contrast to a vacant Walnut Street. We conclude our painterly tour where we started at City Hall Tower. Keep watching for contact information and I hope you enjoyed this presentation. All paintings are 11 by 14 inches in acrylic on board. Outer dimensions of all frames are 17 by 20 inches. The remaining paintings not yet sold are available through the Framework Studio and Gallery at 2103 Walnut Street, Philadelphia, PA. Inquire about our 9x12 matted prints on demand. For pricing information on all paintings and prints, contact Carly P. Grant. Custom framing is available for any of these pieces and all of the art in your personal collection. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we recommend making an appointment to see the work and to always wear a mask and practice social distancing in consideration for others.